Bruce Lee and Chuck Norris, both esteemed figures in the realms of martial arts and action cinema, have a storied history that begs the question, how did their paths converge, leading to both friendship and an iconic clash on the silver screen? Their journey begins in the late 1960s, a time when Lee and Norris were burgeoning luminaries in their respective domains. Lee had already gained recognition in Hong Kong with his early successes in The Big Boss and Fist of Fury. While Norris, a karate world champion, had amassed a string of victories in competitions across the United States and internationally. Their initial encounter took place at the All-American Karate Open Championship in 1967, where Norris emerged victorious while Lee captivated the audience with a martial arts demonstration. Mutual admiration sparked between them, prompting a post-event meeting where they delved into discussions about combat techniques and martial philosophy. Recognizing shared interests and aspirations, they embarked on joint training sessions. Utilizing Lee's backyard as their dojo, Lee, renowned for his receptiveness to diverse martial arts influences, gleaned valuable insights from Norris, particularly in the realm of high-kicking techniques. Previously constrained by the belief that kicks should not ascend beyond waist level, Lee embraced Norris's perspective on the strategic advantage of versatile kicking, especially against exposed targets. Within a mere six months of collaboration, Lee's proficiency in high kicks rivaled that of Norris. Conversely, Norris found himself captivated by Lee's swiftness, potency, and philosophical outlook. He absorbed lessons from Lee's innovative Jeet Kune Do, a martial philosophy advocating adaptability and directness in combat and life. Unlike conventional martial arts, Jeet Kune Do eschews rigid techniques in favor of fluid expression emphasizing simplicity, immediacy, and autonomy. At its core lies the principle of interception, wherein practitioners preemptively counteract their opponent's movements or intentions, necessitating acute awareness, rapid reflexes, and situational flexibility. Their friendship blossomed as they bonded over shared values of dedication and ardor. In Lee's words, research your own experience, absorb what is useful, reject what is useless, add what is essentially your own. This mantra epitomized their approach to martial arts and life, fostering an enduring camaraderie rooted in mutual respect and admiration. Their close bond paved the way for a collaboration in 1972, as Lee extended an invitation to Norris to feature in his third cinematic endeavor. Way of the Dragon, a project in which Lee assumed multiple roles as writer, director, and lead actor. Set in Hong Kong, this martial arts action comedy revolves around Tang Lun, portrayed by Lee, a skilled martial artist who ventures to roam to aid a friend and her uncle facing threats from a local crime syndicate. Employing his kung fu prowess, Tang defends their restaurant against the assailants while immersing himself in the city's rich culture. The narrative reaches its zenith with an unforgettable confrontation between Tang and Colt. The hired enforcer of the crime boss, portrayed by Norris, amidst the historic backdrop of the Colosseum. Way of the Dragon enjoyed resounding success, surpassing expectations by amassing over $130 million in global box office receipts against a modest budget of $130,000, thereby achieving a remarkable thousandfold return on investment. Earning accolades as the highest-grossing film in Hong Kong for 1972 and breaking records upon its U.S. release as Return of the Dragon in 1974, it marked a groundbreaking milestone as the first Hong Kong production to claim the top spot at the American box office. Revered as a pinnacle of martial arts cinema, the film showcases Lee's multifaceted talents as a filmmaker and performer, epitomized by its iconic fight sequences such as the Nunchaku Duel, Ali Skirmish, and climactic showdown with Norris. Beyond its cinematic spectacle, Way of the Dragon serves as a testament to Lee's martial philosophy, advocating adaptability, innovation, and self-expression. The final showdown between Lee and Norris, set within the ancient Colosseum, stands as a masterclass in martial arts choreography, accentuating Lee's agility against Norris's formidable strength and endurance. Noteworthy for its realism, the sequence sees the combatants delivering blows with full force, underscored by a mutual display of respect evidenced by pre- and post-fight gestures of deference. Although Lee emerges victorious, the bout concludes with a poignant gesture of honor as he drapes his jacket over Norris's defeated form. During a martial arts demonstration at the San Diego Comic-Con convention, Norris shared his reflections on Lee's passing. 
recounting a pivotal moment when Lee, cognizant of his own health challenges and habits, reached out with a visionary proposal for an unprecedented cinematic confrontation, positioning Norris as his esteemed adversary. During the martial arts demonstration at the San Diego Comic-Con convention, Norris elucidated his perspective on Lee's untimely demise, recounting a sequence of events preceding Lee's passing in Hong Kong while preparing for his next project, Game of Death. Norris attributed Lee's death to a fatal reaction between medications and supplements, leading to cerebral edema, a condition characterized by brain swelling. Several common treatment options encompass medications, surgical interventions, and oxygen therapy. The primary objective of treatment lies in reinstating adequate blood circulation and oxygen supply to the brain while mitigating swelling. Cerebral edema, if left unaddressed, can lead to severe complications including permanent neurological impairment, coma, and mortality. Tragically, notable individuals have succumbed to cerebral edema, such as Hollywood luminary Alan Ladd, renowned for his roles in iconic films like Shane and The Great Gatsby. Ladd's demise in 1964 at the age of 50 resulted from an overdose of alcohol and sedatives, precipitating cerebral edema and respiratory failure. Similarly, acclaimed singer-songwriter Nicolette Larson, celebrated for her chart-topping track L of Love, passed away in 1997 at age 45 due to complications stemming from cerebral edema induced by liver failure. Following Lee's untimely passing, Norris paid homage to his legacy through various interviews and written tributes. Describing Lee as a transformative figure and cinematic luminary, Norris lauded his humble demeanor and altruistic nature. Citing Lee's profound influence on his personal and professional development, expressing regret over Lee's premature departure, Norris reflected on what could have been, envisioning Lee's continued growth and impact. Maintaining a close bond with Lee's family, particularly his son Brandon Lee, Norris assumed a mentoring role in Brandon's life. Despite being only eight years old at the time of his father's death, Brandon inherited Lee's martial arts prowess and pursued a career in acting, starring in notable films like Showdown in Little Tokyo, Rapid Fire, and The Crow. Serving as both a mentor and a confidant, Norris supported Brandon through various challenges, including racial discrimination, media scrutiny, and familial expectations. Affectionately regarding Brandon as a surrogate son, Norris expressed immense pride in his achievements, underscoring his enduring commitment to the Lee family's legacy. Tragically, Brandon's own promising career was cut short, 